to Dan from Philip. Doesn't even have a address on it. All right. Oh, way of a Dan. All right. Well, I already have that. I already started reading the prologue. Oh, look, it already has a bookmark in it. That's great. Nice. Oh, he's got some gifties for me. What the heck? What is that, silk? Or some kind of f fancy fabric? Oh, whoa. Whoa. What the heck is this? Was that a... A golden pineapple, Philip? Wow. Shouldn't have. Shouldn't have. I'm going to put this... Nah. Nice. Nice. Holy smokes, it's not even over. Whoa. Whoa. That is... Is there any real jewels? Let me just lock this door. Oh my gosh, what kind of racket is this guy in? Holy smokes! Gold and... What the heck? Alright. What? What? What the heck? Where am I? Oh, gee. What the heck is this? Uh, sunglasses? Those. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Jeez, Philip. Oh, there's something else. Oh, and there's a note. Okay. All right. Dear Dan, it's handwritten. Dear Dan, thanks for trying out the book. Please give honest feedback. But here are some gifties. I mean, I saw them. Holy smokes, it went way above and beyond. Philip. P.S. I left you something for if you dislike the book. Okay, I got that. Do you know who Glotka is? Cheers. Ah! All right, let's get to chapter one. I loved it. I loved it. Okay, so thank you, uh, Philip for the gifties. Um, I'll make sure that I still do an honest review or uh, honest kind of feedback about your book, but you went a little bit above and beyond for, for me here. Anyway, let's see um, this first chapter. I did actually think it was very, very good. I thought it was a step above uh, from the prologue, and I thought that it established some things really well. And if, uh, you know, when you go into someone's debut novel and also one that wasn't published or, or uh, picked up by a publisher. Oh, this is driving me crazy. Ah! Um, that, uh, you know, when, it, when it's one that hasn't gone through a publisher, you tend to kind of wonder. 
you know, I, I've loved Philip's videos. I've taken a lot of his feedback for for stuff I've read and I've really liked it and love his commentary on on uh, Malazan especially. So it was interesting to go into it, but you do have that that worry a little bit when you go into it. Now, some of my worries are kind of pushed down after going through the first chapter. I still had them a little bit with the prologue. Um but I really liked I really liked the first chapter. It had a lot of, you know, I, I feel like I'm going to be pointing at The Faithful and the Fallen. Very different series, but it had some of those opening sequence vibes. Now, I'm going to go through some of this first chapter. Now, you could read it on your own, or you can listen to this here and come back. Um, or, or listen to this here, then go and, and see if, that seems like something you want to check out yourself. I really liked it, though. I really liked it. And that's not because of all the gold gifties and the jewels and the stuff like that. I, I That wouldn't affect me. Okay. So we start off. And, you know, generally in this first chapter, uh, we... Here's the map. Beautiful map. We start off kind of up here in... Uh, in the chapter in the story but this and, and it's kind of very much uh it's very quaint it's very bright and lovely we have people uh being people betrothed we have people who feel like you know there hasn't been war forever things are good things are good in our little town um now that's something that as soon as you hear characters start saying that, you think, oh, crap. I uh, shouldn't have done that. But the very, very first scene is not a scene that has quaintness to it, I guess. We start with this Oswi or Oswi. I, I'm, you know, I already have problems with with names in some of these books. And he has a dog named Kip. Now, I, as a kid, uh, we had dogs. We lived on an acreage, and we'd always have puppies, and they were honestly my very, very, very favorite thing. So whenever I see uh, dog companions in a book, I, I just melt a little bit. So we have Oswi. He has Kip. And uh, Oswi, or Oswi, you know, I don't think I'm going to have to worry about his name much because he gets his butt kicked. Now he he's going he's kind of the shepherd that has his uh, father's staff or is going to have his father's staff or what was going to, and uh, his dog senses something when they're all out when he's out uh, kind of outside the walls. Now they think it's just wolves, so this dog is sent off to get the wolves. And immediately in this book, in chapter one, we get some tension, which was good. We didn't have to wait too long before we got something to kind of remind us about some of the dangers that do lurk in this world, even though the next part of the chapter is going to be much lighter in tone. But I do like that the very first uh, scene is, is this. And, you know, coming off the prologue, it kind of matches the direness, but in, in a different way. Now, he goes running after his dog, this, this little chubby kid, who I think he's chubby because he probably, he, you know, he doesn't have great cardio or whatever. He's kind of flush. And when he gets to oh, over the hill and he gets to this uh, enclosure, they find crows, they find flies, and they find that not just one sheep has been destroyed or killed by wolves but all 42 of them in a bizarre scene of carnage a frenzied slaughter now i've been i've been highlighting in this book as well so it kind of drives drives my eye a little bit but it's 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 uh all these torn legs and heads and scattered all over and this seems like much more than just a wolf attack and we have these things 
where he realizes over this wall he sees a little head, a green head with yellow eyes, and realizes, oh crap, this is a night night ganger, night ganger, otherwise known as a pukas. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but they they don't hunt alone, and basically he gets eaten up. This poor kid. So I thought this was going to be our main character, but uh, he feels this stabbing pain into his eyes, and then they, you know, there's all these different, uh, all these different night gangers gang up on the boy and and tear into him, and he's dead. So that's a pretty good way of establishing the dangers in this land. Now we had in the prologue we had these priests of Edur, or no, Edur, what am I thinking of Edur? Oh yeah, the Tist Edur, okay, here we go. So we have the way, the the Idan, we have more priests of them, and they kind of see what happened, they're not supposed to be there, or they don't want people to know that they're going through, and uh, through them, we find out that there's a coming war, and that they must play their part, uh, and they're not going to bury this kid because they don't want people to know that they are there. But it seems like either, you know, they're going around recruiting. They have this, they have this priest, this local priest named Bagsack who knows what he's supposed to do. He's a recent recruit. There's more recruits. And it sounds like it, uh, it sounds like maybe these night gangers, were either driven towards this boy. Maybe he has something special about him. When we get to the next characters, I think maybe, maybe, maybe there's something there. Or maybe he was targeted by these Adan priests. Um, yeah, maybe targeted. All right, sorry. I was interrupted, interrupted. Where were we? Okay, so we have these priests who came in. And it sounds like they may be uh, not just recruiting, but maybe targeting people. I don't know if it is implied uh, that they are using using these night gangers or whatever, or uh, whatever, whatever. But it sounds like that's kind of what's going on, and I'm not totally sure about that yet. All right, so I love this next scene. I thought this next scene was good for establishing the first characters. I thought this is something that reminded me of like Corbin and his father and his, uh, I can't remember what Corbin's Corbin's name was from the faithful and the fallen or his dad's name started with a TH, I believe. And his, and his friend, I kind of got some of those vibes in this, uh, in this, seen here and i like that his name is day raven which uh very yeah very peculiar sort of name day raven all right so we have edgill who is the dad to day raven and edgill's kind of a local legend for uh what did he do again hmm anyway the hero of Kinsford. And it sounds like he's, even though he's getting old, he's showing no signs of slowing down. So he's kicking his kid's butt with this wooden sword. Uh, as well, uh, there is his friend, Imar, or Imhar, but I'm going to do Imar, I guess. And, you know, th- neither of them are lasting at all against uh, this this guy. And he brings them both up at once, and basically he sidesteps through Day Raven's blow, and it hits uh, Imhar on the elbow. And this is just so that the dad can kind of give them another bit of uh, wisdom to work together, or they were they will both uh, fall or learn to fight together, or you'll not live long. That's what he said. And he also said uh, his father's instructions thundered in his mind. Don't wait. Attack first. This is an interesting part here on page 11. So Edgill 
uh, often gave such advice after thrashing them. And Day Raven heard his father's love beneath the unyielding word. So even though he's kicking their butt, he does love his son, obviously. The kingdom of the Mark had not warred for a long time, and there seemed little likelihood of him seeing a real battle, which is super foreshadowy. Okay. Uh, so he is sent on this task to go do these things. He's going to be, uh, he's going to have Ebba or Eba accompanying him, his betrothed. And uh, once they're done doing that, he's supposed to come back and work the fields. Now, <laughs> uh, I do like I do like also this little scene here that uh, between these two. Uh, this is where I finally caught some uh, maybe some meaning behind uh, what this could be sort of about. It kind of scratches an itch of why I also love history. And this Day Raven guy, I wonder how much of Philip is in there. Uh, I really, I really, if I'm going to connect with any of these people, it's got to be this guy because I, I resonate with the same sort of thing that he resonates with. All right, so how about Ather Bertha? They're talking about children's names for for a daughter and uh, uh it's just kind of sappy and and whatever just sounds kind of familiar you know after going through something very deep with malazin it is nice to uh it's nice to get something that's a little bit more a little bit easier to get into to be honest, a lot of the time, these fantasy novels just push you into things real, real, uh, real fast. And, uh, you know, there is a lot going on here as well. But at least the first interactions with these characters are something that, uh, you know, you're getting in emotional impact resonates. So you get that first with uh, this Day Raven and his friend. You also get that with him and his father. You get this idea of community. You get this between... Uh, you get to see who this uh, Imhar guy is who's kind of... You know, he doesn't want to get married. He kind of likes going around and he likes the ladies. And uh, we get this also within this relationship between Day Raven and his betrothed. And... and uh, yeah, very, very cool. And she loves stories. She loves stories, just like a lot of us do. Now, let me let me find something. Oh, yeah, this was a sappy part, but kind of goes into their little relationship. So she says, How would it be if we didn't... How would it be if we didn't know each other? If we came from different parts of the world and never met? Then, he said with a grin, I'd search to the ends of er uh, Ermanland. Sorry, I, I'm so bad at pronunciations. Until I found you. Like the tale of Wilfar seeking Eilfskin. Man, you guys got to cut it out with these names. Because uh, I'm just terrible with it. Silly, you wouldn't even know to look for me. True love would guide me. You know, this is kind of Princess Bride sort of vibes as well. Now, uh, he has a story for her. A story that, uh, you know, often the stories that he has and she points it out are sad stories. But she enjoys them nonetheless. And they have more, you know, there's more to them than just what meets the eyes. Uh, I, I loved this. I love this. At the top of page one, uh, I almost call it 115, uh, of just 15. In truth, one of the chief pleasures was telling Ebba uh, stories, and not only for the admiration. The tales brought them closer, as if they were entering a world he summoned only for them. Now that's, that's just the kind of the dream of being an author 
as well. And I'm sure, I'm sure, Philip, this is, this is what he wants. When, this is what any author would want, is to have this thing in your mind. Uh, you know, I've, in the last few years, I've been spending time with these characters that only I know. Uh, if you look at my, my uh, you know, my profile picture, I guess, on this, has that old man. He means a lot to me. And I can't share that with anyone yet because I haven't put it all on paper. Uh, but these stories from the ancient world in our day, it's amazing that we can be so far away from them and connect. But also for an author, these, these characters that mean so much to people, it's, it's so great to finally kind of put them on paper. And it must feel so great to finally kind of... Uh, transfer that to other people i'm sure this dayless or not dayless now i'm thinking of something else who the heck was dayless i'm going to start mixing series if i'm not careful uh anyway anyway i thought i'd just say that okay so we have this tale about how the you know uh this torland right here was mentioned Earlier on with these three priests, they're like, we got to go back to Torland. I looked at this map for ages before I found it. And it's in big bold here. So they are up here. And the story he's going to tell is about this kingdom and this kingdom. How it used to be just kind of one kingdom, but then uh, it got split because of this guy named, uh, what was his name? Lothar? Lothan. And he, like everyone, fell in love with this beautiful uh, woman from the kingdom that everyone, uh, everyone wanted to marry her. And, and she said, I would only marry an unwed king. Unfortunately, there were no unwed kings. So this Lothar thought, well, I better conquer this land that I pointed at. This land on the south uh, southwest of that big continent, and if I do that, then then uh, she'll marry me. So he does that almost. He's fighting for ten years. There's this all the just all this bloodshed, and finally on both sides they're just sick of doing this. This is all just for this woman, and of course Eba or Eba is just kind of rolling her eyes like really all of this for for this woman why would she <laughs> in her pride even want this to happen anyway so they got sick of fighting split that kingdom and uh you, the, the, he was kind of on this north this lothar guy that was conquering everything and she married him married him and then there's this border in between and uh, it sounds like, and I, I might not getting all the, be getting all the details right, but it sounds like the there were lots of men that were killed at the hands of this Lothar, and she. Let me make sure I get this exactly right, because this is a good this is a good page. All right. Uh, let me actually just read this. This is on page 17. I thought this was good. Lothan's victory turned out bitter. Hearing Agatha... Well, that was that, that lady. Uh, hearing Agatha was the cause of the war, a surviving native nobleman stabbed her to death, then slew himself with the same blade to avoid capture. All of this was because of her, and obviously there would have been tons and tons of people who had lost family. So they're a little bit bitter. Stabbed her, one of these guys, and then stabbed himself. Sorrowful at the loss, Lothan nonetheless declared he had seen enough bloodshed to last the rest of his life. He sought peace by marrying a noblewoman of the southern people. He urged his soldiers to follow the example and find wives among the people they conquered, for a great part of the men in, the, in those lands had perished. And then... So, so they were on the north. There were other people on the south. 
And so they are marrying into these conquered people, and then it's becoming these uh, half-breeds in the eyes of the people that were still there. Now, this obvious, this I don't know why I keep bringing this up. This isn't a Bible study. Uh, this isn't a Bible study channel, but it so reminds me of kind of the of the Old Testament of the Assyrians coming in. And the idea of the scattering of the 10 tribes or whatever from the north scattered them out. And then Assyria kind of moved in and intermarried with the people there. And so the people of Judah uh, would look at the people from the north who ended up being, you know, the the Samaritans or whatever. And seeing them as these half-bred kind of, you know, not pure, not pure... uh, uh, Israel or or whatever. And so you get some of that here. And because of that, there is this tension that goes on for generations and generations. Now, I I say I got uh, Faithful in the Fallen vibes. I'm also getting some of the kind of uh, Memories of Ice kind of vibes where there are lots of things that happened long ago that just kind of keep going wasn't even their fight to begin with this stupid fight started because of some lady and this guy who decided he's got to marry this lady and uh look what happened all this crazy strife anyway thought that was a really cool page and all of this is just going on and because of this they can never have peace uh this imhar the friend of day raven was kind of was kind of uh victimized because of this war that goes on there are raiding parties that go across the war all uh, across kind of the the border all, all the time killing the old and enslaving the young so even though we have this great kind of peace up here down below we have a lot of just tension and and conflict now they keep going it's this beautiful day of bliss. Might be the only beautiful day we get in this whole stinking book. Who knows? He wants to make out with her. She says, you know, we got to get back. And on their way back, or on their way to the, the place, not they, they need to get to this place so that they can get back. On their way, uh, <laughs> they see a little squirrel. And this is when he says something that he probably shouldn't have said. This is something that is like, whenever a a character says something like this, you know something bad's going to happen. The squirrel comes out. He kind of is very comfortable with it. It seems like he has something extra going on. I also got some start of Mistborn vibes where it's like, he can do something that even he doesn't know he can do. I'm getting that sort of vibe. Um... But he's talking about this squirrel. He says, this copse is its world. Like Kinsford for us. That's where they live. It loves its home the same way we do. Idiot. (laughs) Shouldn't have said that. Now it says, Day Raven's awareness contracted around the squirrel. And uh, he could perceive, he could just perceive them through raw emotions or instinct. He felt the squirrel's urge to flee from the strange monsters looming before it. And he has this kind of empathy or this uh, uh, awareness, not just with animals, but with people, this deeper emotional understanding. Why do they come so close to you? Like they're tame, she says. As they're saying that, Imhar rides up and then this is when they, he says, you have to come back. You have to come back right away. Your dad said, it was talking with uh, Earl Stigand, Stigand, and says, we have to, uh, they sent me to fetch you. You have to come back right now. I don't have any more to tell you. Uh, but yeah, very, very cool. Very, very cool first chapter. And this last this last line right here I highlighted because I thought it was really great. I thought it was really great. 
Day Raven wondered what tidings the Earl had given his father to cause such concern. A shadow in his mind belied the warmth of the clear day. Nice one. Whatever was wrong, he was ready to stand by his father and kinsford. Very cool. Anyway, uh, I am looking forward to the what's coming next. So I will see you on the next video. And uh, I'll try to make these a little bit shorter, but when uh, you have your first chapter in a new series, then uh, it kind of begs a little bit more. So I'll talk to you on the next one.